Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me Keith Johnston. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict 3 of 2022. According to the edict is Ahmed Ali Al Manal was appointed as Director of the Directorate of Policies and Strategic Planning and Adnan Said Mohammed Al Mubarak the Director of Directorate of Control and Licensing both at the Ministry of Oil. Under the patronage of the National Security Advisor and Royal Guard Commander Major General His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the third meeting of Middle East graduates organised by Bahrain Defence Force at the ESA Royal Military College. Upon His Highness's arrival, he is received by Commander of the Royal Guard Special Force, Lieutenant Colonel His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and Commanders of the Land, Air and Naval Military Colleges and Academies of the Armed Forces of GCC countries and the UK. The ceremony began with recitation of verses from the Holy Quran and then a presentation on the participating colleges. Sina Sheikh Nasser then delivered the following speech. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Generals, distinguished guests, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It is an honor for me to welcome you to the Kingdom of Bahrain and the third edition of the Middle East Alumni. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, King of the Kingdom of Bahrain, would like me to take this opportunity to pass on his personal regards and wishes every success for this international gathering. This event marks the coming together of the commandants of the military academies and the alumni from around the GCC and three United Kingdom military colleges. Today brings together many old friends and colleagues who all share a unique and very special heritage having passed through their perspective military academies, generally at a fairly young age before embarking on their military journey in several cases to lead them into a complex, challenging world. Old friends and colleagues will undoubtedly be reunited, but it is also an opportunity to make new acquaintances with our sister services from across the GCC and the United Kingdom. Whether we are Navy, Army or Air Force, we all share a similar background and have followed similar paths as well. The bonds that unite us, regardless of services, are therefore very strong. At this gathering, 
of the international alumni through shared knowledge and experience, we will develop closer military ties in the interests of a stronger collective defense. I'm hoping that a common vision among alumni would not only reinforce our already strong bonds, but also help us to exchange information, experiences, and grow together. This alumni should be transcend boundaries and borders regardless of the political or military context in which we find themselves in. The conference tomorrow, inshallah, will see you showcase your institutions and explain the challenges you have while operating. I'm very sure that COVID protocol will be one of the themes that will play a part of your presentation. COVID-19 has changed the way we train and operate on a day-to-day -day basis. And that will not change going forward. Adapt and overcome features in many of our mottos. So I really look forward for the next alumni gathering where we will see many more Middle Eastern col colleges joining us, inshallah. In some cases, military academies, institutes that will add immense value to this organization. Guest countries outside of the Middle East will be asked to attend and add a huge value to this meeting. I look forward to meet with as many of you as possible and hope that you are able to make the most of opportunities to renew and strengthen relationships while forging some more. Wish you best of luck. Shukran. Speeches were then delivered by the Commandant of the Royal Military College, Sandhurst, Major General Duncan Capps, the Commander of the Royal Naval College of Dartmouth, Captain Roger Redwin, and Commander of the Royal Cromwell Air College, Commodore Andrew Dickens. After that, the Commander of the Royal Cromwell Air College handed His Highness Sheikh Nasser the College Medal. He also honoured BDF officers graduating from Royal Cromwell College. The ceremony was attended by Commander of the Royal Isa Military College, Major General Abdurrahman Khalifa al Noemi, Director of Military Training, Major General Salah Rashid al Saad. A number of graduates of the military colleges participating in the ceremony, including BDF officers and a number of senior BDF officers. Under the patronage of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Bahrain National Stadium will witness a match between Kadoba Club and Rifa Club tomorrow. His Highness affirmed Kadoba Club having friendly matches and looking into the sports institutions and the expertise of the kingdom in, under the framework of the cooperation between the Spanish club and Bahraini clubs in order to gain more experiences. His Highness added that holding a camp for Kadoba in the Kingdom affirms the importance of promoting sporting events in the Kingdom and contributing to the realisation of the Kingdom's economic vision at 2030, especially that the Spanish club has made numerous visits to tourist, heritage and commercial places in the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Highness wished Kadoba and Rifa team success in the upcoming friendly match.
the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of the General Sports Authority, the GSA, and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and Oman's Minister of Culture, Youth and Sports, His Royal Highness Thizim bin Hatham Al Said, attended the Bahraini Omani Sports Day, which was held in Oman. On this occasion, His Highness Sheikh Khalid expressed his pleasure in being in Oman, asserting the deep-rooted historic relations linking the two countries and their people. His Highness lauded the advanced level of bilateral ties and the joint cooperation that contributed in achieving different successes in all fields under the support and keenness of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Majesty Sultan Haytham bin Tariq of Oman. His Highness Sheikh Khalid stressed his aspiration for further enhancing efforts to implement joint sports programmes that achieve positive gains in the sports sector in both countries and boost partnerships that help in developing sports and its affiliates in the GCC countries. His Highness praised the efforts exerted by Oman's Minister of Culture and his contributions to supporting the GCC sports movement, wishing His Royal Highness further successes. He also commended the success of the Bahraini Omani Sports Day, noting the organisation of this event as one in a series of joint sports events that will enhance efforts to accomplish further progress and development for sports. His Highness Sheikh Khalid launched the triathlon race, marking the start of the Bahraini Omani Sports Day. Then His Highness watched a show for the Capoeira Sports, which is one of the Brazilian martial arts. Later, His Highness visited a paragliding exhibition and attended a paragliding show. At the end of the event, His Highness honoured and congratulated the first place's winners, praising their outstanding performance throughout the competitions, wishing the other participants the best of luck in the rest of the races. The Shura Council held its weekly meeting, presided over by its chairman, Ali Al Saleh. The session approved a draft law amending some provisions of Law 11 of 1975 on passports, which authorises the Minister of Interior to issue a decision specifying other means of departing or returning to Bahrain, as well as the places designated for entering and leaving Bahrain. The Council approved the request of the Chairman of the Public Utilities and Environment Committee on recovering its supplementary report regarding a draft law on the occupancy of public roads. Texel are celebrated today the arrival of the new Boeing 737-800 BCF and the celebration was attended by the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications, Kamal bin Ahmed Mohammed. The Minister expressed pride in this moment which is the first of its kind in the Middle East, operated by Texel Air in the Kingdom of Bahrain, and added that this success reflects the significance of the Kingdom's infrastructure and progress. He expressed keenness to support private airline companies in order to achieve further expansion and innovation. The 737-800 BCF is an integrated cargo aircraft that is in high demand in the global air cargo market and is the first of its kind in the Middle East. Another aircraft of the same type will arrive in September 2022. The new aircraft will enable Texel Air to ship larger quantities of goods and travel longer distances and new destinations to serve its current and future customers in the Middle East, India, Turkey, East Africa and other global markets. Uh, today's a special day for Texel Air as well as the Kingdom of Bahrain as we launch our very first Boeing 737-800 uh, freighter. Uh, this is the first of its kind for the Middle East region and Bahrain is the pioneer for this new aircraft type. 
Uh, the Barony government has been supporting us since we started operations in 2013, so nine years we've been working closely and we can't say enough uh, to thank them for all the support they provided us as an airline here in the Kingdom. The Joint Tactical Expertise Arab Gulf Security 3 for the security forces in the GCC opened in the eastern region of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The Joint Security Drill is being held under the patronage of Saudi Assistant Minister of Interior for Operations Affairs, General Saeed bin Abdullah al Qatani. Public Security Assistant Chief of Operations and Training Affairs, Brigadier Sheikh Hamad bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, attended the launch of the joint exercise. He said that the drill followed the resolutions taken by the GCC Interior Ministers. He noted the Interior Minister's directives and follow-up of the Public Security Chief to support efforts to bolster the GCC security work, to stave off threats and exchange expertise. He thanked the Saudi Minister of Interior for organising the event. Following the Royal Directive to provide 40,000 housing units and in line with the order of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to distribute 2,000 housing units, the Ministry of Housing delivered housing certificates for East Citra project, in addition to keys for East Hid project. The Ministry affirmed keenness to continue distributing units to beneficiaries across the Kingdom and pointed out plans for more projects and cities that will create more units for citizens in line with the Economic Recovery Plan. The Ministry of Housing pointed out that these housing projects provide walking and cycling paths in addition to the availability of open spaces and green spaces and some of them are distinguished by the locations overlooking the seafronts within the framework of the government's keenness to provide the components of quality of life and housing projects in order to meet the aspirations of the people of Bahrain. His Majesty King Philippe of Belgium received at the Royal Palace in Brussels the credentials of the Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of Bahrain to Belgium, Abdullah bin Faisal bin Jabba al Dossari. The Ambassador conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad al Khalifa, to His Majesty King Philippe, as well as the best wishes of further progress and prosperity to the government and people of Belgium. The Belgian monarch congratulated the ambassador on his appointment, looking forward to enhancing joint cooperation across all fields. General Directorate of Civil Defence, a General Directorate of Traffic Department and Police Directorates in the Governorates and the Police Patrols dealt with more than 479 reports related to heavy rain in the country. The Operations Directorate activated the emergency plan in coordination with the competent security authorities and took field measures which contributed in managing traffic and dealing with the consequences of the rainfall. The General Directorate of Media and Security Culture was keen to broadcast awareness messages through the Ministry of Interior's account on Twitter, calling for motorists to abide by traffic rules in light of the rainy weather, including reducing speed, not being occupied with anything other than the road, and doubling the safety distance among vehicles. The Ministry of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning affirmed that a rain emergency team held inspection visits across the Kingdom's governorates to deal with accumulated rainwater. The Ministry pointed out the need to coordinate with the concerned authorities in this regard to facilitate traffic and eliminate the repercussions of rainwater accumulation. The Ministry confirmed that it monitors rainwater collection sites, provides mobile pumps and drainage systems and distributes tanks in advance to withdraw the accumulated water. The Ministry also revealed that it has re-cleaned the rain drainage holes and open channels to maintain the flow of water and to clean and count the water collection points in the different governorates and has been entered into the system, the designated database, in order to put place the appropriate mechanism to deal with this issue. The Kingdom of Bahrain joined the GCC states in celebrating the Gulf Child Day, observed every January on the 15th. The Gulf Child Day is an opportunity to shed light on Bahrain's innumerable achievements, goals and projects aimed at protecting children and ensuring the integrity of their physical and mental development, as well as ensuring that they enjoy their full rights in accordance with all international laws and agreements. To speak more about this, we turn to a member of the Council of Representatives, Mazuma Abdurrahim, who is the Deputy Head of the Parliamentary Permanent Committee for Women and Children. Recently, we had it in Bahrain and in GCC country. It's the 15th of January that celebrates the occasion of the Gulf Children's Day. 
of course that uh, in Bahrain we have the important attention that raised every year to our kids, our children, and the support for what we having in Kingdom of Bahrain. It is all because of the uh, our leadership. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, with the support of His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, in Kingdom of Bahrain to provide children with the very importance that it's for everyone. We see it with the pandemic COVID nineteen is health number one, and without education that it is mandatory, of course, in Kingdom of Bahrain, we focus on the education as it is very important and very essential to raise our children to become leader in the future.